point of uh, interest, if you're coming from Kalgoorlie and you turn left, broad arrow there, get down to uh, the Golden Quest Highway, nice little uh, town called Orabanda. So we've got the Orabanda Tavern, and uh, when I worked here a couple of years ago, we went too far from here working and we saw this bunch of black smoke, and uh, yeah, sad to say, poor old Orabanda Tavern for about the third time in history. And then you've got your turn off where you can go to the Credo Homestead off to the left. Rolls Lagoon is a nice place if you want to camp out there, I believe. And uh, right takes you back up north. So here's an oldie sitting out in the field. Get you at work bloody hard. No air conditioning back then. Tiny little tracks. Got one, two, three, four, five levers. An old machine that one is. Wow. When in Kalgoorlie or passing out this way, come and visit the Broad Arrow. It's not a bad place. Apparently, got a hook up with the Broadie Burger. So I'm going to go in and try my first Broadie Burger. Train passed through here, water tank, train line, and here we have the Broad Arrow Tavern. Let's have a little bit of history on it for you. Broad Arrow was established in 1893. A couple of prospectors wanted to head north from uh, Kalgoorlie. They managed to come across a really good find. The, uh, the miners there, he was out, he told his nephew who was following later that he'd leave Mark with the trail on the ground direction where he was heading. Of course it's commonly known as a broad arrow so uh, that's how this area here got its got its name. This is the town's solitary surviving hotel, the Broad Arrow Tavern. It was built in 1896. It's featured in the movie uh, Nickel Queen which uh, was made in 1971. An icon in the gold fields for over a hundred years. It's provided beers and meals a place to relax and unwind. A few quirky things goes on there in the old broad arrow. I see somebody trying to get down the old chimney, but it's got a uh, corrugated iron exterior. And back in the day, you could write your name on it. I try to discourage it now because a lot of people were writing over some of the history names from way back. Because there's not much room left in shelters. So, as per the article in the papers, no more writing on the walls. Finally been able to make it to a Welcome to Kalgoorlie Boulder sign. So uh, yeah, we're in the uh, Goldfields Esperance region, which is the largest region in the state of WA. Um, I believe it's got a, uh, an area of uh, 958,000 square kilometres, which uh, I think is about uh, three times the size of Victoria, the state of Victoria. Well, apologise for the delay. We've um, made it to Kalgoorlie and got ourselves settled in here to the, um, the Discovery Park at uh, the Burt Street um, Airport End um, in Kalgoorlie. Not a bad little park, I'll show you around. Um, in the forward direction just down here, yeah, the airport. But trust me, it's been nice and quiet. The last few days have been good. And um, yeah, if, it, if there was a noisy aircraft or something like that that took off, most of Kalgoorlie would hear it, and most caravan other parks that you'd be at would hear it too. Um, and then down in that direction is um, Boulder, so it's only about a 20 minute walk down there um, where you can find um, yeah, pubs. Um, there's a few shops there you can have a look at. Oh, just down here on the next block is uh, Brockelman's Dairy, I think it is. 
and you can get your little, you know, your bread and your milk and Coca-Cola and stuff like that there, ice creams. So, um, yeah, the Discovery Park here is lovely. So we're going to uh, just show you, right next door is the, uh, the pool and the barbecue area. There you go, as you arrived, you're greeted by a little bit of green grass. Warning, there is not a lot of green grass around Kalgoorlie. Some of the reserves and parks will have it. Playgrounds, the pool, we have been in it and it is beautiful, nice and cool. And you've got these neat little A-frame type chalets um, around, there's lots of accommodation for that. As I swing around, you can see lots of chalet type style cribs. Coming through the reception area there, um, lovely greetings at reception. It's got a couple little chocolates which go down really well. And um, they're happy to uh, look after some post and things if you're here for a little while like we are. Managing to get some stuff redirected to us, which will be great. So moving on down, right next door there's a gate you can open up and utilise the park next door. Yeah, usual areas, your wash house for your dryers. Nice and clean and tidy, and so are the toilets next door. All right, there you have a bit of grass where you're camping with your tents and things. You can at least get some uh, tent egg friendly ground. And then you've got your communal cooking facilities, which is pretty well laid out. Clean and tidy, refrigerator, television, barbecue, and whatnot's there. Yeah, well, I've got to admit one thing with this park. Um, well, like quite a few parks, you've got a few um, permanent um, residents and things that live here. Um, but here, of course, being Kalgoorlie, you've got a, a big contingency of fly and fly out workers as well. So there's a fair few here that are accommodated here. And I've got to say, um, thumbs up to everybody here. They really respect each other by keeping their noise down, keeping quiet at different hours of the, the day, especially too with some people that are coming here on day and they're sleeping, doing night shift and things. So yeah, I can't fault this place. It's uh, a terrific place to stay and there's so much to do here in Kalgoorlie so don't come for a day or two come for a week and see it all we'll see if we can find some of those sites while we're here all right so I'm not struggling for material here there was a, a museum we'll, we'll head to that uh, either today or tomorrow but uh, I found myself the world's tallest bin I don't know how official it is but uh, yeah, here we go Probably, uh, it's definitely taller than me. Hang on, I'm gonna have to try and maneuver my camera. There it is, the world's tallest bin in uh, Kalgoorlie. Righty ho, what we got here is a tree. This tree was planted in uh, 1993, I think to commemorate the uh, 100 years that uh, old mate Paddy Hannon found gold here in Kalgoorlie. What actually happened, uh, well, Paddy Hannon was born in Ireland and he uh, came over here to Australia. So um, he spent most of his time on the East Coast and New Zealand doing a bit of um, prospecting and then he was in Tasmania, as I said, the East. Come over here when he was about um, mid to late 40s. Um, started a bit over in um, Southern Cross, I think it was. He dropped a mine shaft down there, which is still named the Paddy Hannon shaft. Didn't do too good there, got a few nuggets together, moved on, he heard Coolgardie was the place to be, so went to Coolgardie. Spent about a year in Coolgardie, still didn't really do too well. And then uh, he got word that uh, there was a bit of gold over in uh, Mount Yule, which is just on the other side of the super pit over here. Um, over to Bulon Way, I think it is. Anyway, so he packed up in Coolgardie with a few of his mates, came over, got, got to about here, Kalgoorlie and uh, he got delayed so he whipped around and had a look at a few little spots and uh, Mount Charlotte I think it's the area which uh, there's a head frame around here somewhere maybe just over over here and um, yeah he found uh, a pretty pretty good stash of gold so he thought this is a good bit I need to go back and register it and Coolgardie for some reason was a place where you could go and register all your, your, your claims your leases or whatever it was so he had to go back there with some rumour that he was good reading and writing and things so it didn't take too long for um, word to get around at uh, Coolgardie that hey there's some gold over here and now Kalgoorlie so um, he managed to basically empty Coolgardie of everybody and they all came over here um, 
apparently didn't stay too long here, a year or two. Got a bit tired of gold and prospecting and everybody, every man and his dog was here. So uh, he apparently uh, left here and went back to Victoria. We're, um, yeah, sad. The, the bloke wasn't a millionaire or anything. He was actually, he passed away quite poor. Ah, new location for Kalgoorlie, the Museum of the Goldfields. Free entry here, there's a donation there, but so I've got a thing on bush mechanics, so it's quite good. And what a day for it, man. Big high frame. Check it out. First port of call is take the lift to the top of the high frame. Oh, P for platform. Oh, I thought P for parking. <laughs> Bloody. Just me eyes. We're on a high frame. You saw just to the entrance of the, uh, the museum. We're looking out uh, Cassidy, I think it is, the Cassidy um, underground shaft there. From memory, the driver said it was about 1.5 kilometers down Cassidy. Uh, then we had, yeah, all the uh, waste rock carted out by those big dump trucks and of course the big hole in the grounds in front of it, it's been left behind. And over here to the left is where the Mount Charlotte Reservoir. It's a huge platform and uh, if this thing will keep going up, it goes up a long way to, to the big wheels that pull the cable of either the lifts or the uh, the other men to go to work and things on these high frames or sometimes don't they bring up ore and stuff from the bottom too I think, I don't know. So here we are overlooking a tremendous uh, site of uh, Kalgoorlie, the main street of Kalgoorlie. I don't know whether it's uh, Kalgoorlie or Boulder combined but there were some 14 pubs on the street and swinging around to the left over here I think there's a white little tower you can see, I think that's the airport. And just some beautiful old churches around. I think this building down here is the, the TAFE. Community College or something they call them. Okay, made a big mistake. Kalgoorlie Boulder Hotels. There were 93 hotels in Kalgoorlie Boulder in its heyday. One hotel for approximately 320 people living in town. And before the water was piped through from Perth, beer was cheaper than drinking water. Golden Eagle Nugget was found not far from here. Largest nugget found in Western Australia. Golden Eagle at La Crombe. This is interesting, on 28th of April 1926, two members of Gold Stealing Detection Unit, John Walsh and Alexander Pittman, left Calvary on bicycle to follow a lead. They never returned. Alrighty. We made it to a little spot just outside Kalgoorlie. Um, just a few k's um, on the way to Perth. Um, it's in the area of Bindoli. And uh, yeah, on the other side of Eureka, finding gold and all that excitement, there's the other side, of course, and that was uh, stealing of gold. So there was a 
um, a gold detection type um, police squad that was out for these kind of um, offences. Anyway, these two blokes, um, one was Inspector John Joseph Walsh and the other Sergeant Alexandra Henry Pittman. They started in the early 1900s, uh, I think uh, 1907 or something like that. I think that might have been when the gold detection was all started up. Anyway, um, they uh, were on the tail of a, um, a possible um, gold, um, what do they call it, processing or stealing. So they were out investigating that. So they hopped on their bikes and were <laughs> doing the, uh, the investigation on their push bikes. And they come across these, uh, I think it's two guys riding bicycles, they came across two men. And um, they approached these guys, you know, what are you doing? And um, yeah. Buddy got shot. Um, they tried to burn the bodies, they mutilated the bodies, and they bloody well threw them down a, um, a mine shaft. I think it was, uh, I don't know whether it was exactly the spot, but um, Miller's fine. They threw them down. So a few days, well, it's actually quite a long time. Um, 14 days later, the two police officers had not returned. So they did a big search. So uh, they went. Um, missing um, around about April the 28th, 1926. And it wasn't until May the 12th, 1926, that they, uh, a tracker or something come across the whole pile of blowflies and yeah, put two and two together. So yeah, pretty um, sad for a couple of blokes that left um, wife and family and bits and pieces all in an aid of, um, yeah, keeping, um, thieving and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, quite a sad spot. Let's, let's see if we can find some brighter things. <laughs> Hi everyone, thanks for watching Sweet As RVing. We've enjoyed bringing um, Sweet As RVing to you. Um, if you'd like to see more content, um, enjoy watching us, um, click that like, share and follow button and also drop some comments um, on uh, things you want to see um, and even help us um, go out there and see things as well if there's anything that can, can help us, we'll try and help you. So uh, yeah, thanks for following Sweet As RV.